here, the Frugal Crafter, today by request, by a lot of requests actually, probably my most requested topic, um, I'm going to talk about color theory, mixing colors, and the color wheel. And um, I'm using watercolors to explain this, but this will apply to whatever you're mixing, whatever color paints, whatever type of paints you're using. And um, the way I like to mix is based on a split complementary system. So I use these six colors. It's the three primaries, but I have a warm and a cool version of each. So um, this is my palette here. You can see I have a lot of colors. I don't use them all in one painting and you don't need this many because you can mix pretty much anything with these six. Now the reason you might want to have other colors is because of the way that they stain or the way that they lift or the way that they granulate um, or they're just the specific, specific characteristics of the pigments or maybe because you use them a lot and trying to remix the same thing over and over and over again might take um, a bit of extra time once you've developed what your style is. Uh, but we're going to use these basic colors and um, I just want to go over this a little bit first because I I did this. I actually filmed it, but then I thought it might be easier for you guys to see this first and then we'll make our color wheel together. So um, what I have here on the inside of my wheel, so you'll begin by drawing a circle on your paper. Um, I have colors that are mixed vividly on purpose, then I have colors that are mixed um, mute, muted on purpose. And when you use a split complementary color system, you're able to get the most vivid colors. So say you want to make a nice bright orange. If you use the warm red and the warm yellow, that's going to give you a vivid orange. If you use the cool red and the cool yellow, it's going to give you more of a peach. With purple, if you use the cool red and the warmer blue, it's going to give you purple. But if you use the warm red and um, the more greeny blue, it's going to give you almost a black. So you can see how you can really um, control your mixes by knowing how your colors lean. If Do they lean cool? Do they lean warm? Do they lean towards what, what tier... Um, tertiary color do they lean next to? So, and I also want to show you, I do a couple favorites here, yellow, ochre, burnt sienna, and sap green, but I was also able to mix them from the six colors that I have here. And don't worry if you can't write all this down and you can't remember it, I will have a printable PDF that you can download that will have the list of my um, basic supplies on it, so you can check that out too. So here I've just um, drawn a brand new chart so we could fill it in together. So what we're going to do first is we're going to lay out our colors. We're going to get some um, cadmium red, which is our more orange red. Okay, I'm also going to put this um, right here on my color wheel. Now we're going to get some alizarin crimson, which is our cooler red. Put that right here in this box just so you have a kind of a color key. See how that's much more cool? And we're going to go over here with it. Okay, so next to my crimson we're going to put ultramarine because that is more like purple than our prussian or our thalo blue so we've got some ultramarine ultramarine here just want to make sure i have plenty on there and ultramarine is going to be our warmer blue over here now let me show you what happens when you mix these two colors together since we have two going right there already to mix a little bit of that crimson. Get a beautiful vivid purple. And you know, mix it a little bit more red, we get a red violet. And we get a little more blue, and we get a blue violet. Okay, but they're super, super vivid. Now, look what happens if I, let me get the other blue, and we're going to use, also use um, either, you can use turquoise, you can use Prussian blue, you can use thalo blue. I'm using Prussian blue because I find it lifts a little easier and that's a quality that I like. Now let's see if I take that color and I mix it with that color. So I'm going, you know, I'm trying to make purple with the colors, the primaries that are further away from each other on the color wheel. Look what happens. I'll tap a little bit of that off. It's kind of yuck. A little bit more of that in there. Look at that. It's just, it almost turns black. You know, but you might want that. You might want to be able to make that shade, so that might be what you're going for. Okay, look at that. It's like almost like a burnt umber color. Okay, so for our yellows, I want my lemon, which is a little more greeny, over here next to my Prussian. And I want my cadmium yellow closer to my orange. All right, I also got a fresh, put my phthalo in there. We'll put that in there just so you can always see a fresh version of that. Oh, it's pretty. I like that color. Okay, so now let's do, let's mix the rest of our um, tertiary colors. So we'll take a little bit of this 
cad yellow. We'll take some of the cad red. So you get a beautiful orange. And I can mix it in with a little bit of the red I already have and have a red orange. Can mix it more over to the yellow and get more of a yellow orange. So you get some nice, really vivid mixes there. Same thing with our lemon yellow and our Prussian Thalo or turquoise, whichever you're using. It, see, you can get your favorite. Pick whatever color you like the best out of those. And then you can um, you can still get the really vivid mixes. Rinsing my brush just so I can kind of pull some of the colors to their neighbors so you can kind of see how you can get that uh, more chartreuse color by adding more yellow or you can get more of like a teal by having it more over to the blue side. Probably have a little more yellow in that to get a more balanced green. There. So right here I've shown you how to make some really vivid mixes. Now let's say I want kind of a khaki green. I don't want that super vi vibrant green. I'm going to take the cadmium yellow because it's more closer to orange. Okay, and then I'm going to take the ultramarine blue that's more closer to purple. So they're, I know they're not going to make a vivid, a vivid color because they're too far away on the color wheel. So when I mix them together, look at that, I get kind of this olive, almost like a sap green color. See that? So, I mean, you can really control the colors. You can have the exact color that you want. You don't have to spend time hunting for a tube of paint. Oops, I want the cadmium. See, you get that lovely kind of khaki-ish, almost like a sap green color. And the same thing if I take that crimson and I take the uh, lemon, because they're further apart, I'll get a peach. So watch this, I got my lemon. And I get just a touch of crimson, because that's very strong. Get more of a peach, especially if I add water to it, I'll get much more of like a peach color. Okay, so you can see how you can really manipulate your colors here and you don't need a ton of colors. Now, um, one way people like to darken colors, they'll, they'll want to add black or brown, but you don't need to do that. So what I can do here, I can take a little bit of either of these reds, okay, and I can pick up some of this green. Look what happens. They neutralize themselves. They turn into a brown or a gray. They negate each other. If I do the same thing with the purple and the yellow, the same thing's going to happen if I grab some of this yellow. I grab a little of that purple, see? They pull in together and they all make these neutral browns. Now if I want to make gray, I could do, um, well all those two colors made a really good gray. You just want to make sure you have probably a little bit more of the bluer based colors in and you'll get more of a gray. But I take this yellow, my blue's dried there so I'll just grab a little off the palette. I'm going to grab Prussian blue, you could take either one. Oops, I need to grab my orange. You know, you just get you just dull it down by adding your opposite to it. So it's um it's really intuitive once you try it. And I mean if you have some cheap paint, that's a perfect stuff to practice color theory with. Go ahead and play with it because it will help you. Now um, the other thing I want to show you is there may be some colors you use all the time and they're really handy to have on your palette. And in those instances, I would, you know, go ahead and buy a tube. Like I really like yellow ochre. I really like burnt sienna, and I really like sap green, but we can mix these colors with those six colors that I showed you, okay, and I will show you how. So what I like to do is figure out, okay, what's this color most like? You know, I'd say this is probably the most like these two. So I'd grab my Prussian blue, and I'd grab my um, lemon, because it's always easier to dull a color down. Okay, that's pretty close, but I feel like it needs just a touch of like maybe cadmium red. So I'm just going to grab a touch of cadmium red. And look at that. Same color. Okay. So for the Brent Sienna, I would say, well, it's probably, um, I'd say probably if I go with that blue and that red. So cad red and Prussian blue. And I might need a little bit of yellow. Let's just do a little bit of that blue and see. Maybe a little bit more blue. And let's add some cad yellow to it. Let 
need a little bit more blue because it's a little too orange here. bit more blue. Oops, that's a little too much. But you can see how you can kind of get a little overboard, like that's more of a burnt umber, so now you get a little bit more red, a little bit more yellow to kind of tone it down a bit. That's a little closer. And there we go, get a little closer there. So, you know, it can be, um, and that's not dead on. I was a much closer on this one here that I just mixed. That was the mix. That was the burnt sienna. But the other thing I want to show you, another reason why I like to get some colors from the tubes, you can see like this burnt sienna here has some cool, interesting markings in here, just the granulation from the pigment, whereas this is very flat. And um, like this yellow ochre has a little bit of, seems to have a little bit more granulation than that little swatch I put there of my mix. So, um, you know, I would say go ahead and buy the colors if you're going to use them tons but you know you can mix them so for yellow ochre I would start with cad yellow because that's what it's closest to then probably add a little bit of the cad red I'm gonna mix it over there I've got way too much cad red in there and then I would need a touch of blue to negate it I'm going to try some ultramarine for that because I don't want it to turn green because it's got a lot of yellow in there More can yellow. So, I mean, this is like a delicate balance, but you can mix it. A little bit of water. Maybe a little bit more blue in there. But, you know, you keep mixing it until you get just the right color. And I could pick up some of my neutrals that I've already mixed and, you know, alter it that way. So, basically, what I'm telling you is mix your colors, learn how to work with those six colors. Then, you know, I do recommend these colors if you want, but not necessary. Have fun. Learn how to mix your colors. It's going to really pay off in the long run as far as your painting goes. Now, if you're painting in oils or acrylics, of course, you add water to lighten them. I mean, I'm sorry, you add uh, white paint to lighten them but it's the same deal no matter what you're mixing, no matter what you're using. If you found this helpful, please give me a thumbs up. It really helps my channel. Share it with your friends on Pinterest and Facebook and Twitter and wherever you like to share things. And if you're not a subscriber yet, I'd love it if you hit the subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, happy crafting.